Hey, what's up you guys? It's Bjorn from Jurassic Park Traps again and this video is going to be a little update video about the main tank, about the nursery tank, about the Granarius hatchery. So I have quite some subjects to talk about. Let's take a look at the main tank first. Uh, I did add a new wood piece to the left corner. Um, behind it is the filter and um, I was kind of done with the open hole that was this size so I just added a new piece of wood to make sure that that part was covered as well and this piece of wood also has a lot of holes in it so I thought it was a good place for the shrimp to hide in and um, I definitely want to plant some Bucephalandra plants on it uh, as soon as I have some pieces that I can actually plant on it um, I'm growing out some Bucephalandras on the glass right now um, I have been doing this uh, several times now and it actually works pretty well for me. You can actually see that it's shooting a tiny new little roots over here. And uh, what I want to do is uh, I wanted to kind of copy the uh, Boost of Flandra Ketagang that is growing over here in this region. Over here, um, I had some uh, of these long sprouts uh, shooting out, and I was like, "Nah, it's not looking very nice." I wanted to, the growth to be a little bit lower in the beginning, so I cut off the lo the longer pieces and I just uh, stuck them to the glass for a bit. I'm trying to um, have them grow out some roots now first, and when they are a little bit bigger, I want to actually attach them to this piece of wood over here, or to the front of it, so I can actually have some uh, boosters over here as well. And um, well, next, I'm not completely sure what I want to do, but I also have a lot of room on the back glass over here. And uh, I was thinking of adding some Boosa Flandras in uh, suction cups to the back of the glass as well. Maybe some little containers that are uh, connected to uh, suction cups, also possible as well. Um, for some reason, uh, I never, um, uh, you know, I always like to use the glass as well to attach some stuff to it or at least, um, you know, to use uh, most of the space that I have. And uh, actually the traps, uh, Cancroformus albino, are actually pre doing pretty well inside the main tank right now. They are doing fine together with the Amano shrimp. I have not seen any hostile action towards the Amano shrimp so far. And uh, the Amano shrimp also haven't shown any aggressive behavior towards the traps as well. Um, since I removed the coolie loaches, I actually haven't seen any damage on my traps anymore, so I guess, uh, well, I'm actually pretty sure that the coolie loaches were, like, um, responsible for the last traps massacre that happened inside my tank. Um, basically, what happened back then is that a lot of my traps actually were showing up with, um, lots of damage towards their gills, uh, egg sacs being torn off, so, um... One day I actually saw the coolie loach going for it, uh, attacking one of the um, traps, and then I was like, yep, I need to rehome them, so I did. And then I actually came back with this little funny guy, uh, the Pleco. He, he's doing fine as well, munching on a little waffle right now. Uh, I also got this new plant, um, I actually have it several weeks now, but maybe I forgot to mention it, but I actually have a tiger lotus or something, tiger lily or tiger lotus, and it shoots really nice petals um, that definitely look like lilies, or lotus, well lotus is the flower I think, uh, lilies. So it's a really nice purple red red toned plant and I actually liked a different color. I had some um, Ludwigia super reds in the back but they are not looking very super red yet. Um, I actually am able to see some red go coming up in the top but I actually expected it to be all red but maybe it takes them a little bit more time. And um, also this warrior is still doing great. This is my giant ram's horn snail. It has been with me for almost uh, one and a half year right now. Uh, my brother-in-law collected it uh, from a, a pond in his garden. So it is a giant snail and it actually is the only ram's horn snail that I'm keeping right now because I had some uh, like some outbreaks of pest snails 
And, well, this big giant definitely had to stay because it is definitely a character inside the aquarium. Um, you can definitely spot him from far away as well. You definitely probably see what I mean, know what I mean. So it is definitely the character. Uh, I call him or her the mothership because it is such a giant snail and actually had like quite a story on its shell. Here it has probably had its better days and uh, well, it had a really hard time inside the pond for a while I guess. And um, it also had a lot of damage on it and I actually scrubbed it down a little bit and then well, some parts of the shell started to fall off so I just left it at this and um, well, this little old one is definitely a character inside the aquarium so. I really wonder how long this snail will stay in the future. And it also always has its tiny little garden on its shell, which is pretty funny in my opinion. <laughs> always growing some algae on it. And basically I always call it the food truck of the Triassic Park because basically most of the animals also eat the algae from this giant snail. So it's basically a little food truck that just wanders around in the tank. And uh, well, it basically has a tiny little garden and it definitely does snack some algae off the glass as well as you can see over here nom nom so definitely a nice big ass snail I really like this one so I'm definitely gonna keep it for a while and uh, I hope it will survive for a longer bit let's move over to the nursing tank right now um, that's basically it. I have basically seven adult triops cancerformus albino inside this tank right now really doing well Let's move over to the big tank or to the nursery tank. I'm sorry guys um, The albino cancerformus are actually growing up really fast inside this tank They have been laying lots of eggs as you can see here are some of the tiny little red dots. These are the eggs. This is exactly the reason why I use black gravel because this way I can actually see all of the eggs mostly. Look at that. Nice little tiny egg clutches. And basically when um, the eggs start to show up at the surface, this means that the um, gravel beneath it is actually sometimes filled with more even more eggs because they are actually digging up their old eggs um, over here is another nice tiny little clutch if you can see it let me zoom in that's a really nice clutch you can actually count them as well so that's a really nice egg clutch if you didn't know how the egg eggs of the tribes look this is basically how the eggs look tiny little orange or red little dots and they usually hide them inside the gravel. This one um, was hid below this little moss ball, but I removed the moss ball a little bit to check it out, and then I found this little uh, egg clutch. So it was really fun to see that it actually was on one location. They are really healthy, doing well. Just little a little bit of grazing on the moss ball and uh, some of them are eating some of them are actually digging again to leave even more eggs and above them we have the granaria traps granarius hatchery and actually these guys have been growing in an amazing fast speed look at that these guys are just three or four days old and they are actually bottom feeding already and they actually have grown pretty big and um, this time I actually didn't use 24 7 light so it is the first time that I just used um, about let's say 12 or 14 hours of light so that's different this time um, of course there it's possible to just hatch them without 24 7 light but I have been doing that in the past because it actually did kind of boost the hatching rates but in this case it actually still gave um, about like let's say 10 triops on about 60 eggs possibly so that was actually a good run and I had some good hatchings and um, it was actually also the first time that I used snow water um, people have been asking like um, can I use some molten snow instead of rain it's definitely possible Rainwater, excuse me, it's definitely possible and I did a little experiment with it and this is the result um, The triops have been hatching in the snow water and um, They actually have been doing really well, so it 
is definitely a safe source, I guess. And uh, I did collect uh, the snow uh, from a table to make sure it was above the ground. Just make sure that you mind uh, pollution and stuff. I would not uh, remove any uh, snow like from any sidewalks or something or where cars are nearby or, or if you are living in like a heavy pollution area. Um, definitely cannot recommend to use the snow there. But if you're living in like a nice place um, where the snow can be trusted, then you can definitely uh, gather some in a bucket, make sure it melts down and then fill up your hatchery with it. Make sure you actually try to heat it up first because if it's really cold, um, the eggs possibly won't hatch for uh, a longer while because the hatchery has to um, heat up a little bit. But as you can see, the traps, Nopleys are, well, Nopley, they aren't Nopley anymore. Um, they actually are traps right now, juveniles. They have formed their little head shields and this species should, should actually have really extremely long tails so I'm really um, interested well, how they will look in the future I never had this species before so this species is new to me as well um, there are males and females but I did actually uh, do a lot of research on them um, you know just checking the articles and um, finding out by um, reviewing and reading um, scientific papers and stuff and then I actually got to know a little bit more about the species but I always like to see it with my own eyes for the first times so uh, definitely gonna try to uh, gather some more uh, footage above these guys and uh, definitely gonna keep uh, bring you guys onto the adventure to watch about this species um, it is a male female species so it is also new to me that I actually need to make sure that I have males and females because most of the trout species are actually hermaphrodite which means they have a female body and they do actually have some male body parts as well that are capable of um, fertilizing their own eggs so that's actually really interesting to have a gonochoric species that actually requires a male and a female to mate or at least to fertilize the eggs so that's new um, but let's see how it's gonna f work out in the future well not in the future just in the coming upcoming weeks and um, i'll make sure i update to you guys oh there is another one there are plenty of them actually inside the hatchery as you can see i actually also upgraded to an xl hatchery i made wanted to make sure that they will actually have a little bit more space this time as it is a faster growing species and they actually might be um, with a lot of uh, like a bigger group so I wanted to make sure that I had a little tiny little bit bigger hatchery and um, give me a second guys I need to get myself the other hatching containers I'm not completely sure where I left them never mind um, but it is twice the size of the older um, hatching containers that I was using previously so this is the X XL hatchery it is for bigger groups and um, for faster growing species just to make sure they can still keep them after 12 to 14 days and um, what my plan is when these guys are like uh, mid juvenile almost adult I wanted to uh, transfer the remaining cancroformis albinos to the main tank remove all of the substrate harvest the eggs dry them up and they should be ready for sale very soon next step is actually rescaping this little tank a little bit and um, then it's time for the cancroform for the uh, triops granarius it's time for them to move in um, and let's see how the breeding behavior will look like and um, let's see if I will be able to get some fertile eggs as well and next step is another new species and doing the same process all over again so that's almost it guys I also wanted to show you guys a new sponge intake filter that I bought um, it is a different filter sponge type that I bought this time the older one was like only half the size and I thought I would increase the um, suction um, surface a little bit more it is inside the main tank as you can see and um, well it actually has been um, filtering my water way more efficiently than the other intake uh, filter sponge and that sponge was like 
um, it had like really large holes in it so it was actually not pre-filtering too much and I really like this one way more and um, a lot of food actually starts to stick to it sometimes and then the creatures inside the tank are able to graze off the sponge filter as well and they actually do this pretty often the shrimp are usually on there like 24 7 at least there is at least once one over there 24 7 it's fun and uh, well it's definitely like a little uh, food tower for them so this is a really nice addition to the main tank <clears throat> Have been using it for several days now. Definitely a nice uh, addition again. So that's basically it, guys. I guess uh, I hope you guys enjoyed the little update video. Um, I will be possibly uploading another video this week. Otherwise, it will be next week. Um, I am expecting that the trout's gonarias are going to grow pretty fast. So I think we might be see be able to see some juven of some juveniles and some adults for very soon. So. Hope to see you guys next time. Thank you for watching and hope to see you soon. Goodbye.